artwork tonight, but this is what I look like. Um, so I'll keep that in the corner. You can follow me on Instagram and at Sarah Rubes. Um, and I'm actually the co-founder of a company called Art Snacks. It's a monthly subscription box for art supplies. This is our logo, our little pretzel pencil. Um, all of our products ship in these monthly boxes, like a little pencil box. Um, so we see all different types of art supplies, whether it's watercolors, acrylics, pens, pencils, you name it, we send it. So um, we have an online store, um, but our big uh, seller is the subscription. So if you're ever interested in subscribing to Art Snacks, you can use the code BRISTOL10 to get 10% off your first box. Um, I'll leave this in the corner as well, so you won't forget it. Let's see, you really don't need to see me, so I'll just put that on top. <laughs> um, cool, so thanks again, Mike, for inviting me here. Um, I've got pretty much the same supplies that I believe most of you received. Um, at some point, we've got, um, I have a few of my own extra brushes, so let's just go over some of the art supplies. Um, round brushes are great for watercolor. Um, oh, and by the way, um, I'm in Boston, so I'm also in your state, on your coast, um, living in the same overcast world that is <laughs> that is Boston right now. <laughs> um, cool. So art supplies. We've got um, a couple brushes. Um, I'm using all round brushes. Round are great for um, watercolor, uh, just great for movement. Some of them have a better snap to them. Um, so you'll see that as we use them. Um, but I believe this one came with the set and then I've just got a couple on the side too. The watercolors we're using today um, are, I believe it's Art Alternatives is the brand, um, but this is a perfect set. You've got the whole color wheel here, but it's just not in like a round shape. It's just in block form. <laughs> um, so perfect for um, mixing colors and getting a whole range of colors that you want to get. Um, but this color palette is a great um, starter if you're like new to watercolors or just new to paint and color theory in general. Um, I also have, and this is optional, I have two small glasses of water. I like to use two glasses because one will eventually become very muddy and uh, saturated with pigments. So I like to have the regular one that's unused off to the side as well. So usually I'll clean it off in here and then just re-wet it in the clean one. So eventually you have to pour them out and refill them with cleaner water, but I always have two on hand. So I'm gonna have those off to the side. I also have the postcards. Um, these are Strathmore watercolor paper postcards. Um, I got three of them. I believe you guys got three too. So we're gonna use these. Um, we're gonna use all of them actually. Um, obviously you don't have to if you don't want to, but um, these are great postcards and maybe I'll even send them to some family members too. So lots will be happening tonight on these guys. Paper towels are helpful to have on the side as well. Um, I've got two, I also have a rag. This is just like a history of my painting all over this rag. Um, again, painter's choice. Um, and I also have, this is a, a little spray bottle. Um, I usually keep this on hand with watercolors. Uh, this is a pro tip. If you're working with a set like this, you literally just spray the set to pre-wet your paints. So you don't have to keep going back in and out on your, um, your water cups here. So I just pre-wet everything so it's easy and um, let's get started. So what I'm gonna do, um, and feel free to, I have the chat, uh, the Zoom chat off to the side of my screen here. So if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in there. Um, I'll answer them as I see them. Um, so I'm yours for tonight. We'll be here like 45, 50 minutes. And uh, yeah, let's get painting. So I'm gonna use one card first, and this is gonna be, let's call it a warm up. It's gonna be a warm up. Um, if you've never done watercolor painting before, you really wanna loosen up a little bit, stretch your hands a little bit, and um, let's get messy. So I'm gonna grab one of these paintbrushes. Um, also, I'm a lefty, so a lot of my stuff will be tilted a little bit. Um, so what we're gonna do first is we're just gonna swatch. You know, some of the colors here may not show up 
exactly the same on paper. So it's important to swatch out stuff. So my, I'm gonna try and make this as Bob Ross style as possible. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, great. If not, don't worry about it. I'm just gonna make this as soothing as possible. Um, and we're just gonna swatch out some of these colors. Usually with swatching, some people make squiggly lines, some people make blocks. I like to put down a lot of pigment and then just like drag it out and see how dark I can get it, see how light I can get it. Really just letting the water control where the pigment goes. So we've got like a pretty dark green. I'm not gonna do all of them, but I am gonna do the ones that I will probably be using the most tonight. So after I swatch these, you may get an idea of what I will be drawing tonight. Okay to be messy. This is just our warm up. I've been typing on a computer all day today. So sometimes the paintbrush feels a little awkward at first if you're not used to it. I think I like this olive green more than the other green. Start picking up some of these warm tones. See how it's like sort of adding this texture a little bit? Not sure if you guys can see that. Um, that's just because I don't have enough water. So sometimes you can just dip once in the paint and then just wash it out with water. A nice red. I'm going to move on to orange. So right off the bat, these paints are really great because they're picking up a lot of color just with one dip of the dip of the brush. And you can see how much I can drag out the pigment just by pulling it straight down. Obviously, the more water that you add, the lighter the color is going to get. That'll be good to know because I'm going to be using a lot of orange tonight. This is like a gold or like a yellow orange. Um, so while we're going along here, um, you'll notice that your card might start to buckle a little bit, the more water that you add to it. That is totally fine. That's completely normal with um, watercolor. Um, watercolor paper, there's two different types of watercolor paper. There's hot press and cold press. And that's just the, um, when they're making paper, that's just the temperature of the water and how it gives it certain texture. This is um, cold press paper because it has like a, a texture on it, like a tooth kind of a feel to it. Um, hot press paper would be very smooth and you probably wouldn't even notice that it's watercolor. Um, a lot of people usually tape the edges of their paper down to the surface. Um, I do that every once in a while, but for the most part, I like to move my painting around a lot in case I want to get certain angles or certain shapes. So it's, it's up to you. Um, a lot of, I know a lot of people that use a lot of washi tape. Washi tape is a special tape that does not stick or leave residue uh, to your artwork. So those are nice to have on hand. But tonight I'm moving the cards around. The surface is really small, so it's not gonna be too bad. This is like a really pale yellow. I'm pulling out some fall colors here. Um, again, this is just the warm up. So if you don't feel like swatching all these warm colors, by all means, we've got a great dark, uh, cool color scale here. So you can test those out if you want. I'm just gonna do red. 
this one looks like my darkest. So I'm really gonna pull. Oh, it's almost like a pink, actually. Um, one rule of thumb with watercolor, um, layering can be challenging sometimes, um, but you really want to make sure that your watercolor is completely dry before you layer anything on top of it, or else you'll get sort of like a muddy mess and that's, nobody wants that. <laughs> cool, so I've swatched out a few colors here. Um, I'm going to switch brushes. I want something for a little bit more detail. Um, this is like a, I think this is the one that came with the set, very skinny. Um, and I'm just going to practice just a little bit of um, line work. So I want to load up my brush with a lot of color. Um, and I'm just going to practice my line work by doing a few loops. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. I'm just trying to practice how skinny can I get my my brush to to take here. You could also do some diagonal lines um, with pencils with paint brushes with markers, the more pressure that you add to the tip of the brush, um, the more the, the wider your shape will be. So here I am drawing lightly. And then if I press down really hard, I get this like, almost like this leaf shape. So that's good to practice too. So if you press down hard and then pull up gently, you get all those shapes. Oh God, what color was I using? I think I was using this one. <laughs> I love doing squiggles. <laughs> like little ribbons. Very cool. A cool effect that's happening here is um, as you can see, whoop, sorry, I have a little stand here and sort of shaky when I touch it. Um, I have, uh, you can see where I put a lot of pressure down over here, how it's like darker red and it's lighter red on the edges. Um, that's a really cool effect if you want to show, if you want to like create shadows, it sort of looks like it's dipping in where it's darker. It's a, just a cool effect as we go on through the night. Ooh, I do not have enough water. Cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna touch these a little bit. These feel these greens seem a little dry, which is good. Um, it's a good thing about this paint, it dries quickly. My paper still feels like kind of wet, so I'm gonna let these parts dry. I'm gonna flip this over and let's experiment with um, drying on top, like just layering. So I'm gonna brush that off. Um, I'm gonna do another spritz. I'm gonna start highlighting some of these darker colors. Navy blue is really speaking to me. So let's see on the dry colors, on the greens, let's see what that looks like. So I'm just gonna draw some lines. Sort of looks like feathers. I'm doing the same pressure technique. So it looks pretty good. It goes over pretty easy. Um, one thing you don't want to do is continue to add water to this because it'll reactivate the green. Um, that's the whole thing about watercolor. It can be reactivated at any point with water. So I just reapplied some more color so I can make these darker. 
I'm gonna add, I'm gonna be super careful and just add a little bit more water so that my blue expands onto this green. So you could take, you could paint something tonight, let it sit for a week and then go back to it after a week and reactivate the paint. Like that's how versatile um, and I don't know, watercolor is crazy. <laughs> I always think about all the old paintings made by some of like the masters um, out there who are like hanging in museums. If I reactivated their paintings with water, like what would happen? Cool, so this is coming out. I like the blue and the green on top of each other. So this is looking pretty good. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling pretty warmed up. Um, so let me know if you have any questions before we move on to our next postcard. We're going to draw, well, we're not going to draw, we're going to paint. We're going to make some abstract pumpkins next. And I'm testing out this a little bit more because I'm going to use it on my third postcard. Very much looking forward to that. Cool. All right. So I'm going to use this card as like my test sheet. Um, I'm going to have it off to the side in case I need it for some of the other painting that I'm going to do. So let that dry. Grab a fresh card. Um, also make note of, this is clearly upside down, so if you want your creation to be um, in the same direction of how your postcard is going to be written, just make sure you keep that in mind. I've made that mistake plenty of times. All right, I'm gonna switch brushes here. Um, so first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make some pumpkins. Um, I say abstract because I'm not gonna like draw them out. You know, sometimes you go in with the pencil first, draw what you wanna make with the outlines. Um, I'm not gonna do that here. I'm gonna keep it loose. Um, we know that pumpkins are round. We know that pumpkins have like little sections. Um, that give them their curves. And we also know that pumpkins have like a greenish brown um, stalk at the top. So let's start with making our pumpkin. Just the base. Um, I think I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna do one right here and one right here. So I'll start over here. So I'm gonna do just like a this one's going to be wide and short. I have a few pumpkins on my, um, at my door. I like my front door. And they're all different shapes. So once you make that outline, you can pull the pigment out of that outline using just water. See how it's starting to, you've get this, you've got this defined line here and then you're just sort of like pulling the paint out with water. Everyone's pumpkins are going to look different. Some of them are funny. Some of them are cute. <laughs> Starting to make more lines to show some of the more some of the more definition that's with them. But I'm gonna add a lot more water because I feel like I have enough paint down. I just wanna Cool. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more paint because I really want them to be super orange. They're ripe, ripe for the picking. I'm leaving some of the spots white. Um, to show that like if my light source is coming from over here, it's gonna be the brightest when you look at it head on. 
So this white is going to represent where that light source is coming. And as the pumpkin curves around, it's going to be darker on the edges. So that's why I'm trying to get that harsh line. Before I add anything else to this guy, I'm actually going to let him dry a little bit and I'm going to work on my second pumpkin over here. He, I think, is going to be a little bit more round. Don't be afraid to add extra water. If you've got a few lines down of orange, you can pull out a lot of pigment by just adding and adding and adding water. doing some faint lines here, show where its curves are. I'm gonna add some more defined lines. We want less of a basketball and more of a pumpkin. Another thing that I've, I've learned I mean, in, in art school and also just like in general um, is not being afraid to move your entire hand, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, instead of just drawing like this, make sure that you're moving your hand around. You can get a lot more gesture and a lot more um, flavor, shall I say, with um, uh, moving your entire hand across your artwork. I'm gonna add a lot more water here. I'm gonna add more orange. I know some of you are focusing on your artwork, but um, if you can give me a thumbs up on Zoom, I know that you guys can do the reactions. Let me know that you guys are still at it. Hang it in there. Awesome, I got, I got a thumbs up. Thank you, thank you. This is also my first Zoom tutorial. Um, so this is new for both of us. I really want these defined lines, these like dark colors on the side. So I'm just slowly going around. So this guy is pretty much dry. I'm gonna go in a little bit more and do some defined color here. Cool, cool. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of blending Right now, we've, I'm just, I'm using so much orange, um, but I wanna do a little bit of blending um, with some of my other colors. I'm going back to here um, to see what colors I use. This was like a red orange, I think. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test on here what blending the two colors looks like. And again, you can reactivate watercolor. So just looking at this, I'm just gonna put some water on here. I've reactivated, it's slowly mixing and turning a little bit more orange. I'm sure you can see that. Um, but I'm gonna add yellow just to see what this looks like. I like the way that com that's coming out. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet the orange and then I'm gonna put the yellow on my brush as well. That should give me the color that I want. Mm -hmm. 
it might be hard to tell um, on the screen, but in person, I'm looking at it here, it definitely gives it a nice, like a yellowish orange tone. And I really like that. Ooh, I got like a fuzz. Huh. All right, this guy is drying pretty nicely. Just rubbing my finger on it to make sure that we are good to go. I'm gonna use that same yellow orange to give my pumpkin a little bit more definition on the top. Cool. All right. I am ready to move on. I'm going to clean off my brush. Here's a classic example. I've got the one on the right here is turning way more foggy than the one on the left. So I'm cleaning off this brush. Um, and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add the stalks and I'm also going to do some like vines, potentially some like leaves too. So I'm going to switch back to my big brush that I was using before. And let's bring in some green. I really liked um, this like olive green. Pick up some of that. Um, yeah, this is getting dry. Um, I'm gonna do the stock first. This might be a good idea to incorporate that pressure technique. Now you'll notice I picked up a lot of water on this one. It's like super watery. So what you can do is with a dry brush, I have a dry brush off to the side, you can go in and just tap it on there and the brush will naturally just like suck up some of that water. I don't want to spread it around. I just want to suck up some of that water. It's a little too much. Um, you can also do that with a paper towel. You can just go in and dab it if you have like a big area that you've covered. Um, so I've got that. I'm gonna do like a little swirl. And another little swirl. I'm gonna do a couple swirls down here. A couple leaves. Need more pigment, need more paint. So you can just have fun with this. Add leaves wherever you want. I mean, half the time we see pumpkins not even on vines. So this may look a little weird, but this is where they start. So some of these I want a little bit darker, so I'm going over them again with less water and more pigment. All right, I'm gonna let that green dry and I'm gonna move on to my next guy. How are we doing on time? 6.30, cool.
So yeah, I made this pretty muddy with a lot of water. So I am going to pick it up with my dry brush. I actually like the texture that happens here when I when I bring the dry brush in. So I am totally cool with that. And then this guy is gonna have bigger swirls, bigger vines. Kind of want them to join. Yeah, I'm gonna have them join. They're in the same patch, you know. They're just in the same patch. Sometimes it's hard to do certain things because I'm a lefty, so sometimes I do my little swirls a little bit differently. Like I'll end it there and then I'll continue to finish it here. Brush control is something that is learned over time so if you feel like you're like drunk using this brush and nothing's happening the way you want it totally fine you don't learn that on the first round that's how i feel half the time i'm like oh i can't even control this brush how do i know if my art looks good brush control is hard it takes a lot of practice unless you purposefully want it to be like a little edgy, you know? I think we need some more here. Cool. I think I'm happy with this. Um, I'm leaving this space empty here because I may write a message later, um, depending on who I'm sending it to, maybe like happy Halloween or it's fall. Um, or like, this is just a good spot to like write a message. Again, you want to wait until it is completely dry before you actually add anything else. Um, I can recommend that a lot of pens that are pigment based, um, your rollerball pens, uh, I don't recommend rollerball pens on top of watercolor. Um, you could leave it like this, or I would get like a pigmented like ink pen in order to uh, draw on top of it. Um, I can demo that if there's time later, but um, again, I don't recommend the rollerball. Um, a great pen you can use is a Sharpie. A lot of people know the Sharpie, um, but definitely make sure it's completely dry before you add any extra details, whether it's um, a jack-o'-lantern face or writing some a message over here, absolutely wait till it's dry. If you're impatient like me, that can bite you in the butt later. So sometimes I jump the gun and I'm like, oh, this is dry. It must be dry. And I draw all over it and then it starts to smudge and I completely regret it. That's happened to me way too many times. So I'm gonna leave this off to the side and let it dry. I'm really happy with the way the colors came out uh, and the orange and the green reacting with each other. So pumped about this one. So hold that to the side. And we've got one more postcard left. Um, we're gonna do some trees. It's very Bob Ross of me. Um, we're gonna do some trees, maybe some background. Um, just uh, another example of blending colors. I think trees is a great example for that. So. Um, I am realizing I have to do it this way, but honestly, you could also do it this way. Um, I think I'm going to do it this way this time. Um, what is this? Vertical. I'm going to do a vertical. <laughs> um, at that point, I don't think it matters which side is up, but for vertical, I'm going to be mixing um, green and blue to make my trees. Um, and these are going to be way more loose, way more abstract than our pumpkins. Um, so now is the time to loosen up. I actually think I'm gonna use this same brush. So I'm gonna wet it. And I'm gonna be mixing blue and green. So I'm gonna do blue here. I'm sorry, I'm gonna do green here. <laughs> I'm gonna put it right on top of the blue. I wanna activate that blue. 
it's gonna be like a bluish green. And notice how I'm just using like the corner. And we're gonna get real abstract here. I am just making some marks in the shape of a tree. And see how we've got these this like beautiful color here? It's the blue green. That's just by mixing it just right on top. Now I've picked up a lot of blue. That's totally okay. Curating color palettes is probably a whole nother live stream, but, and so is the color wheel, but you've got your colors here. Oh, that is a really cool color. Thank you, Mike. This is a very cool color. Um, oh, I think a lot of people silo themselves into just green being the color of a forest and the color of trees, but Sometimes there's hints of blue, sometimes there's hints of red. If you've been driving around in the, um, in like the back roads or anything, now you've noticed that everything is like a little bit red and orange. So again, I'm just being super loose with this and really just allowing the colors to define the tree. I'm getting some really dark spots that I really like. Um, it's okay, I don't have to fill in this white area. But I do want a little bit more green, so I'm gonna put some green on top. And I'm gonna blend it with water. Okay. So again, I've got a little bit of dry brush over here. I'm gonna keep that because I like that, that look. And I'm gonna do another one over here, I think. So this one is gonna be um, a lot more blue, I think. Oh, I need a lot more water. Um, every holiday season, I usually send out holiday cards to my friends and family. And last year I did a similar style to this. I made all of my holiday cards last year um, and I used this like tree style. Um, came, it came out pretty well. It just took forever to do because I had so many cards to make. Um, so I'm trying to work a little smarter this year. I'm not sure how I'm gonna go about doing it. I changed the style up every year, so. And also my list grows every year, my holiday card list. So, you know, just extra work. You'll notice that um, this blue over here overlapped onto here. Um, these paints seem to dry pretty quick. Um, so I'm glad that it didn't smudge or start to bleed at all because, you know, with watercolors, they bleed. So um, it seemed like it dried fast enough for me to be able to, uh, to like layer over that. So happy with the way that came out. Adding more blue accents. And then going over it with water. Cool. Um, so while the tops of these dry, I'm going to, you know, I'm just gonna add like a few lighter ones in the back. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the stems over here, like the um, the base of the trees, and then we're gonna do like a wash of the background. Super simple landscape. So I just want it to look like there's a lot of trees. So I'm, I'm sort of just like painting lightly, very lightly around these trees. So just it looks so that it looks full. And sometimes it's just a matter of dipping it in the water just to get some color on there. Keeping it loose, keeping it loose. Cool, okay, so we're gonna use, um, I wanna keep it dark for the, the trunks, the trunks of the trees. 
So I think I'm going to use this like super dark brown. And I'm gonna do it really, really light. And short. That's all. That's all I want my my tree trunks to be. Now I did make this a little wet. I'm afraid to put it down there. Ooh. Sometimes blowing on a little bit will <laughs> help it dry a little bit. The second that I put my wet brush on wet, it will immediately just expand into the paper and it's not gonna look cute. So all right, let's see. Let's see if this works. I need to pick up more pigment. Okay, not bad. Not bad. All right, I'm gonna let the brown dry. While that is drying, because we are gonna put a, a ground floor here. While that's drying, I am going to switch brushes to this one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do like um, like a dark sky. Well, I'm gonna do a dark sky. You guys can do a bright sky. Um, and what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to lay down some water. Just, I should be using the clean one. <laughs> I'm literally just, this is just water. There's no pigment. Laying some water down. This is a wet on wet technique. So it's pretty saturated. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of this blue and some white. Yes, white watercolor does exist. And I'm just gonna dab it on. See how the water just picked up whatever pigment I put down? Let's get a little bit more. Again, this is loose, loosey goosey, adding more water. It's kind of like an overcast winter sky, you know? Got a little blue. I'm trying not to get super close to the trees because I don't want to pull that green out. Again, the second you get that wet, you're going to be pulling out color. I don't know if you want to do that. If you do, go for it, but I do not recommend. So I'm getting into these little cracks here. Again, trying not to touch the other trees. Just a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, and we got color. I feel like I picked up a little bit of green, but that's okay. It's not always gonna be perfect. I hope this was relaxing, guys. It's quite relaxing for me. Watercolor tends to do that. <laughs> hey, let's see. I am feeling pretty good about the way that this guy came out. A little overcast. It might rain. I don't know. You don't always have to put the sun in the sky either. I remember when I was a kid, I used to draw the sun just like chilling in the corner over here and it was pointless <laughs> it wasn't giving any direct sunlight it didn't reflect any of that in my in the rest of my drawing it was just the sun just chilling in the corner so don't feel like you have to put the sun in every landscape painting you really don't cool so I'm gonna let the top of that dry right here when it dries is a great spot to write a message or um maybe draw some birds or snowflakes or something like that. So I'm gonna leave that space blank, but I'm gonna cover up this bottom area here. And this is this bottom area is gonna be more green um, with a little bit of blue. So the trees were more blue with a little bit of green. 
This one is gonna be green with a little bit of blue, sort of um, jockeying between those two. And I'm gonna add some texture. So I'm really just adding like these little like flicks of grass. And I'm not gonna color it in completely. Um, maybe there's a little snow on the ground. So leaving that white space allows for snow to come through. I'm gonna draw it all the way up to the tree, the tree line. Um, and I believe um, I am tonight going to be raffling off a Art Snacks box. Um, our next box that's coming out is the November box. Um, so if you are watching the live stream right now, you are automatically, you're automatically entered into the raffle. Um, Mike Fox, who is also moderating this live stream, um, we'll be choosing the winner and I will be sending you an art snacks box. So you guys don't have to do anything. You're automatically entered into the raffle. I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> so not only did you make some art, you got a chance to potentially win some more art supplies. Just a little bonus. Sort of filling in these gap areas over here. It's okay if you get the green over the tree trunks. I think that is totally cool. But I do just want to like cover this bottom area. I want to saturate with the green. So I'm really just adding more water and pulling the paint down. Watercolor takes a lot of patience. So I'm glad you guys joined me for this, this night of patience. <laughs> yeah, so my sky is already dry which is great. The paper still feels like a little wet. So I'm definitely gonna wait before I add any messaging at the top or anything like that. Um, let's see. I think I'm happy with this. I think I'm happy with the color on the bottom. Wash off this brush real quick. I'm happy with the way that came out. I hope your trees also came out um, pretty fun and festive. Oh yeah, so that's on the side there. I'm gonna let this one get um, off to the side and let that guy dry. I'm gonna bring my pumpkins back because they are, yeah, these guys are dry. Um, and I'm just gonna do a quick demo of, let's see, let's see. Do I have a pen? Can I get a pen? Where's my, let me grab a pen for you guys. I wanna show you what you can do. Here we go, okay. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen these around. These are Micron pens. Um, you can get these at Blick. You can get them at uh, artsnacks.co. We have a shop, we have them in the shop. Um, so a Micron pen is a pigmented pen. This one is a, uh, Micron PN. PN stands for plastic nib. Um, great pens, um, good for outlining. You can see it's got just like a little plastic tip. Um, and I want to show you what it would look like if you were to outline uh, your pumpkin. So I'm not going to outline him completely. I'm just going to give him some shape here. Just some more defined curves. going pretty gentle. It, it goes perfectly just right on top, super smooth. Um, you don't really get the same um, smooth smoothness 
is that a word? Smoothness? You don't get the same effect um, if you use like, um, like a Bic pen or anything like that. So I highly recommend looking for microns or Sharpies. Any of those would be best for um, drawing on top of watercolor. Add some detail right here. This is the pumpkin stalk. Even have my little leaf. I'll just do some quick design on here. So now you can see those pumpkins a little bit more. Always a plus. And then why not? I'm just gonna add a message. I'm gonna do a little, um, we'll do a happy fall. Happy fall. Um, maybe I'll send this to my parents. I haven't seen them in a while. My parents live in Rhode Island, so um, they have been quarantining there. I haven't seen them in a couple months, so it'll be nice to send this to them. And I've got plenty of stamps. Been so supporting USPS pretty well. Got a lot of stamps from them. Cool. Um, all right, looking at the time, um, let me know if you guys have any other questions in the chat. Um, happy to answer them while I'm here for the next about like two, three minutes. Um, again, this is a Micron PN. Um, it's kind of fancy. It says archival ink. That just means it's going to last a really long time. So if you put it on this uh, postcard and then you hang this postcard on your fridge for years, uh, the color is not going to fade in the ink. So a little pen 101 for you guys. Um, so that is that. Oh, thank you, Mackenzie. Glad you enjoyed. Um, so let's just review what we did. We played around with some colors. Honestly, you can draw on top of this and send this to somebody in the mail. That could be pretty fun. Um, it's very abstract, um, but you can even write in your message that this was a test. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> um, so we did a we did a warm up. We did these pumpkins. Very pumped about those. Um, my card here is actually still a little wet on the bottom, so I'm gonna let that dry. Generally you know, overnight, just leave it, don't touch it, let it dry overnight. Um, some people want their things to dry really fast and they go in with like a hair dryer. Um, I don't think that's necessary, um, but if you wanted to send it out real quick, you can put a blow dryer on your artwork. But um, in the meantime, we've got a nice abstract trees and then we've got some cool pumpkins for the fall. Um, so again, if you wanted to subscribe to Art Snacks, you can use the Bristol 10 coupon code. Um, this doesn't expire, so feel free to use this whenever. You can follow me on Instagram here. Um, Art Snacks also has an Instagram. It's just at Art Snacks. Um, very easy to find. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. And these paints, these are great paints. Um, they're gonna last you forever. Notice how we barely made a dent in them tonight. Um, so just make sure you clean your brushes and close this in order to keep them from getting damaged or, um, or you know, just protecting your paints. Pretty important. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for joining me. This was super fun. Um, and now I got to think about who I want to actually send these to. This one I think is going to my parents. This one I don't know.
we'll see. Awesome. So thanks for having me. We can hang out here too. <laughs>